Hey everybody, what's going on? We're hearing some Dragon Air, and today I'm gonna to share with you some tips that I've picked up through my time playing this game that I think would have been really helpful to fully understand and know when I was newer. So if you're a newer player coming into the game, hopefully this will help you get your bearings a little bit quicker. Uh, because while this game might feel familiar if you played other games like this, it also has a lot of very different things going on, and maybe some stuff matters a little more in this game than you would think it does based on experience in other games. So uh, before we get started, I do want to give a shout out to Dragonair for sponsoring this video. If you decide you want to check it out, uh, you can click the link down below or scan the QR code that's above me right now. And again, this is a pretty good video to come in on because hopefully I'm going to set you up for success early on. All right. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about that is incredibly important. And again, you might not think it's super important is let's just go to any random dungeon here because I need to get into the battle setup screen. And that's when you're setting up your fight. So let's just jump in here real quick to the to the lineup screen. Positioning is so important. It's so much more important than you might think it is. It, it matters a great deal. So so learning how your champions are going to going to move based on where you put them is very important. Learning what the enemies are doing at the beginning of the fight based on where their position matters. And then there's going to be some enemies that have certain arrows where they're going to like blitz a certain lane or they're going to. You'll have to take advantage of, of the movement mechanics. So if, you, if you're stuck on a stage, try moving some champs around before you just completely give up, because there have been times as I've pushed my way through this game where I'll go into a fight and be dead within 10 seconds and I'll reposition my heroes and dominate. And sometimes it takes a little trial and error. But just because you get smoked at the beginning of a fight doesn't mean you can't beat it yet. It just means you might need to look at your, your positioning. So don't sleep on the positioning. I know in a lot of games, it's it's common to just be able to drag your heroes in. And when they're strong enough, they just run through everything. This game, it matters quite a bit more. I think they really wanted some emphasis on the positioning of your, your champ. So think about the dungeon mechanics. Think about what's going on. Uh, somewhere like the flame domain especially if we jump over there really quick the flame domain is a great that probably would have been a better one to go through to to emphasize this but you'll see the positioning of my champs in the flame domain they're all spread out because the boss will hit you and then hit all adjacent champs so if you can split your champions up in a way where they don't take that extra splash damage you're going to be much more successful in the dungeon. Whereas if I if I group them all up in the middle here, they might just get killed as soon as they get to the boss. You know what I mean? So really think about the positioning of your team when you're when you're setting up your fight through the campaign, through the dungeons, through it all. Anytime that you're, that you're setting up your champs for battle, pay very close attention to what's happening based on where they're positioned. And you might be able to make some adjustments and and again, run right through it. The next thing I want to talk about are commissions the next things i want to talk about are commissions i should say so when you click on your book it seems like it wants to default to commissions but it's this tab right here with a little exclamation point these are kind of like your daily quests okay if you're familiar with that model in other games and these are important to do to actually level up your character and then again you get some pretty nice resources by doing them but it's important in getting your your level up here like your actual account level so be sure that you're doing those and you can also know which ones they are because they're the blue ones. Your daily commissions are always the blue ones on your map. All right. So uh, this means you've got something that can be completed. This means there's something that you need to do to complete it. And this one means you haven't even triggered the quest yet. OK, so I, these usually for me are things that I need to cook that I don't have the recipe or, or, or the ingredients for yet. Um, but like th these two are just ones that I could go finish real quick and, and be done with. So do your daily commissions every time they're available. All right. I think you can have up to six available at a time. And then every four, you get some bonus rewards here. Right. So just be sure that you're doing these. These are very important for you to do to level up your character. The third thing I want to talk about is the Goblin Lair. Goblin Lair is where you're going to farm your experience potion. So this is going to be crucial for you being able to build champions and level them up. You're also going to need their crystals from their appropriate domain. But uh, you, you will need these. These will be very, very, very important. And you really can't have too many of them. So as soon as you unlock Goblin in the story mode, start farming. 
push your way up as high into it as you can and farm the highest stage that you can. You will eventually, as you push through, unlock Goblin Lair 2, and you want to start farming that as soon as you can. I actually unlocked it before I could farm it. I think I was still on like stage 4 of Goblin Lair 1. But uh, w when you unlock Goblin Lair 2, again, just always farm the highest stage of this you can. Over time, you you'll get your team faster. It'll become more efficient. But this is a very important dungeon. And when you come into this game and you don't know a lot about it, you don't really know where the important farming spots are, right? So this is this is one of the most important farming spots. As soon as you can get in Goblin Lair, get in it. Also, beware <laughs> uh, when you unlock Goblin Lair 2. Sometimes you'll have a quest or something that'll be like, farm Goblin Lair, and you click go. It's going to default you to Goblin Lair 1, even though you have Goblin Lair 2 unlocked. So... Be aware of that, because that would be a real shame for you to waste that energy. So anytime you need to go to Goblin Lair, I'd recommend clicking on the book. This is your Dungeons tab, and then Goblin Lair 2 and just fast travel to it, okay? We're, we're here already, but uh, make, make sure that you don't let it send you to Goblin Lair 1, and just, you know, sometimes you can be kind of zoned out and mindlessly farm and not realize it's put you in the wrong dungeon. So uh, Goblin Lair, very, very important dungeon. As soon as you unlock it, get in there and get in there heavy so you can start getting your other champs caught up which will let you continue to progress into the game, all right? The next thing I want to talk about are equipment plans. This is a really handy feature in the game that I think could be a little easy to overlook or maybe feel a little intimidating. So maybe you think you just don't want to mess with it, but it's going to really make your life a lot easier. Uh, in your champ screen, you can come over to the team tab, but then you've got your different teams that you can set up, right? It can also have equipment plans. So, for example, if we look at them here, Sigrid has this gear, and then I've got the, the volcanic disc on her for my goblin team, right? But if we come over to my vortex team and go to my equipment plan, you see she's wearing the crown. She's the one that's putting up my defense down in vortex. So sometimes it can just be a subtle change like that, and other times it can be completely different. For example, I'm working on one for my Grave of Rot dungeon, where I'm going to lean very heavily into resistance so that we don't have to catch debuffs in Grave of Rot because that's a way to get through that dungeon. So that they're going to have very different gear on for Grave of Rot, but I don't want to swap their gear every time I, I go back and forth from a dungeon, right? So if I, if I create an equipment plan for it, then when I'm in the actual battle screen, if we go, we can just do it here in Goblin, I reckon. When I, when I go to start a fight, You'll see over here, I can choose which team I want to do, and then I can edit the equipment plan, and then I can decide to use that equipment plan for that team. So again, if I if, if I was running something else, if I was running Flame, well, that's a different team. Let's, let's say I was running my Frost team, which would be a little different. I'd have to come in here, equip this team, make sure that their equipment plan for this team is in use. It'll move all the gear for me, and that's the gear they'll use for this dungeon, okay? Another thing I want to add on here to this one is that for Arena, your gear is completely different. So be sure that you come to the Arena, and then here you go, Competitive Mode Settings. And here it's going to have all your champs at level 100, which I think is a really cool thing that it does. This way you have access to all of your champs without having to build them specifically for Arena. I think that's a really cool thing that they do. Uh, but you'll notice, like, like, he's got gear in the rest of the game for me. But the Arena gear is a totally different thing. So if I want to sync it, I can. It's easy to sync, but by default, they don't have gear on in here. So you need to come in and gear them. So if you're just jumping straight into Arena, you might be using your champs, your level 100 champs, and you might just be getting handled every fight and not understanding why. It's because they don't have gear on yet. So you have to come in and specifically gear them. Like, I haven't really updated a lot of mine. I think I've got gear on the main ones that I use. And beyond that, I haven't messed with it a ton. But like, I want to play around with this guy in Arena, so I need to come in here and specifically gear him for it. So you can put on a wildly different gear for Arena. Uh, but, I, but I wanted to make sure I mentioned that, that that's going on. And again, you still have your access to your team slots and stuff in here. But again, by th this is like a totally different champ box than your champ box for the rest of the game. So be sure that you visit this and check their gear. And again, the way that you get here is you just click on Grand Arena and then Competitive Mode Settings will bring you to your roster so you can edit all your gear and stuff, okay? The last thing I want to talk about in this video is synergy. You really, really want to pay attention to this because it makes such a big deal to the level of success that you're going to have in the game. 
You really want to try to have this lit up. I spent a lot of the game with only three spots of it lit up. And when I finally decided to go for the for full synergy on my team, it is such a noticeable difference. The, the, again, it, it's, it's similar to what I was talking about in positioning your champs. There were fights that I wasn't even coming close to winning. And then I swapped out and got full synergy. And I mean, they just ran through it like it was nothing. So you really want to try to lean into this. And you also want to pay attention to what dungeons you're doing. For example, in the fi in the flame domain, fire and poison damage taken by enemies are reduced by 90%. Damage dealt to fire and poison heroes from enemies is increased by 90%. So I wasn't really respecting that. And, and that scales up as you go. In the earlier stages, it's not quite as extreme, but it, it still matters. And I was trying to run... A team, not, I didn't have him, I had someone else. Uh, but we were taking so much extra damage, not doing much damage, and struggling in the dungeon because it, th these were the only champs I had built. And then I recently decided, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like lean into it fully. I'm gonna make a new team that's, that's affinities that aren't being punished for being in here and that has full synergy. And w they just absolutely th trash this dungeon. Okay. So, Lean into your synergies and pay attention to the mechanics in the dungeon. That, 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 that kind of piggybacks on that. You know, if you've got a full fire and poison team, that's great. And you want to use them in most places. But when you come into the flame domain, they're going to be at a huge disadvantage. You're going to struggle way more than is necessary. So fill up, fill this up. Just try to get this lit up. It's, it's, it's three of one affinity and two of another. Okay. And then again, be, be aware of the dungeon that you're in because maybe they're being punished for being in here. But it, it makes such a difference. And I it's, again, a, a thing that I kind of slept on until I was well into the game and, and finally thought, you know what, let me see. Let me see if this makes a difference. And holy cow, does it make a difference. So uh, those are a few mechanics in the game and things to be aware of that I think are pretty important that I also think were kind of easy to overlook. There's, of course, a lot more like beginner tips and things like that. And perhaps we'll do another one of these uh, that maybe is a little bit more generic in the future. But I hope that this helped somebody. If you've got any other tips you want to leave in the comments down below, that would be great. I'm still learning. I'm sure some of you could drop some stuff that would help me in the comments. And again, some of the other viewers that that uh, maybe are still trying to get their bearings in the game. So uh, that's it. I hope it was helpful. Big shout out again to Dragonair for sponsoring this video. Uh, they've been great to work with. I, I appreciate them a lot. If you decide you want to check this out, there is a link down below, or you can scan the QR code on the screen right now. Uh, that's going to do it for me. I hope you guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next one.